Hello friends and welcome back! Today's video is going to be rather satisfying for some of you. I've taken all the little things that you do to finish your dress, which we normally don't really talk about that much when we're making things on this and other channels. <laughs> Frequently there are things that are done, they're not really done, or closures aren't attached, or whatever needs to get done isn't actually done, and we just sort of gloss over that fact and be like, here's my great outfit. <laughs> well, I've spent the last two weeks working on grinding out little things that needed to get done. And it's everything from the bears that are going to go on the bottom of my Merida skirt, to the fringing, to the buttons, to all those other things that somehow get glossed over sometimes. And I filmed an entire video of doing all the finishing work. And that is a lie, <laughs> because I, there are still a few things that need to get done, but I decided that they're not that important for getting photos of the dress. As I sit here looking at two and a half hours of footage, I hope that those of you who like the long videos are very excited right now, and uh, I'm here to finish up this dress today, so I'm super excited about that. I will be doing a reveal video next with final shots, and I'm going to take pictures and video and show you all the layers and all that kind of stuff. It's currently getting cooler out so I can uh, put on a wool dress and be outside and not be screaming so that's fantastic. Meanwhile, here's all the things I've been up to for the last couple of weeks. So for the past month and a half I have been slowly fringing this overskirt and I don't know how good this is going to come across because Black watch is not a thing that likes to come across, but this is about the amount of fringe I've gotten. I am waiting for some static electricity spray to help me. It'll make this, like, craziness be less. So I've, I've done one side, and I'm partially through another side. So this is one of the little pieces of magic that is happening on this costume. That is too boring to be put in its own video. Um, and takes the time of its own video. So I'm gonna show you real quick how I do this so that you can see how it went. I just go through and grab one thread with a needle and just start pulling it out. And yes, I am sitting here pulling this out thread by thread by thread. I did consult with a kilt maker um, about this and there are other methods that you can use, uh, some of which I am too chicken to do. <laughs> uh, there's a way to snip the threads down so that you can pull them out easier. Uh, that's not my jam. I'm not doing it. I'm afraid that I will ruin this whole thing and I just got it the way I want it. So that's a hard nope from me. Let me see if I can put this over a little bit of a lighter background that might help you be able to see it. So, I'm just like literally finding this, the one thread and grabbing it and pulling it so it comes up out of the threads and when it breaks, because it does, because it's a wool thread and it breaks easily, I just pull it out and toss it away. It's pretty easy to find out where you were. Um, you'll see it because it will rise. I don't think you'll be able to see this, but... It does, in fact, rise right here, so I'm going to grab it, and then just keep going. So every time I'm talking on the phone, or on a Zoom meeting where I'm not recording, or I'm watching YouTube channel stuff, I just sit here fringing this guy out, and it is a good thing to do in your spare time. I get about one thread out every eight to ten minutes, so I've pulled out, I don't know, something like a hundred threads already, so you can do that math and figure out <laughs> how much time I've spent fringing this overskirt, but I did want to make it look like the back of a kilt. I will, sorry, not the kilt part, but the um, plaid that goes with a men's kilt, actually. I will leave a picture here for you. So that you can see my inspiration, and I found one that was actually Black Watch to show you. <laughs> so I, I thought it'd be fun to have just the overskirt fringed a little bit. I was pondering doing it to the back of the jacket, and I'm still pondering doing it to the back of the jacket. But 
I don't know how that's going to go. Well, probably not. I'm probably just going to hem it and move on with my life because I think it will get lost in the shuffle. This fringing has uh, a hope of showing up against the skirt. When I get to this end, because these are actually coming in from sort of underneath the pleats at this point, at the very top, I sort of flip it around so, so I can see where the edge is right here, which is probably something that you guys aren't going to be able to see, but I'm going to lighten this up until you can. Uh, I do recommend actually getting in there and picking it out all the way down to the very end and then clipping the thread with scissors rather than just pulling it. You can do it that way, and I tried it, um, but it became a mess, and it just kind of gets clumpier and clumpier and clumpier, and it just looks a lot more professional if it's clean all the way up. So I just sort of keep pulling it all the way down in there, and that is why a needle's great. And once you can start pulling it up um, a little bit, you can... Instead of having to pull it this way, you can actually just pull the other fibers out from it. And then eventually it will come to the point where it is uh, flat against the skirt because it's actually on the vertical and not the horizontal of what you're doing. You're pulling out the, the like vertical. <laughs> Everything's at an angle, so neither thing, none of this is actually true. But it is going this way and not this way. So basically, the thread is coming out of the waistband, not one of the threads that's going this way. So you get it all the way down, so all the threads are out that are going this way out of it. And then I go in with scissors and just nip it as close as I possibly can. And then start the whole process over again. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep doing that. I know, it's a different day. And I'm working on bears today, which I don't really know how to explain this fully. Other than, uh, so Christine made me these bears. They look a lot like this. There they are. And they come with this washable, fusible interfacing on the back. And I am going to rinse that off. So I have two more in here that need to be rinsed off. I have four here that are done. I need a total of seven. So these four are complete and also some packing tape apparently. Um, and ready to go to the next step, which is to cut them out. And boy, howdy, is that a thing. And these two are over here. I have been blocking them as I pull them out. They're really gross and wrinkly. I'll show you one when I pull the next ones out. And then I block them and iron them. So that's that step, which I'm going to go do to these last two that I need to be done. I'm, I'm having eight. Really, I need seven. It's good to have one that you can pick from. Because what I'm going to do is go in and like fill in a little bit of... There's some that have like a little bit of gapping, which you can't really see from like this distance, but <sighs> I'm just like this. So I'm going to go through and just stitch in a couple of stitches in there just to fill it in a little bit on a bunch of them. Um, and then cut them out and then applique them on to this skirt. I have been taking ones that she sent me that were like messed up for whatever reason, like this one is messed up here, and practicing cutting out. I started with scissors and then I quickly went to burning them, burn all the edges, <laughs> and I did that and that was cool, but it made the back of this, this isn't one that I burned, but it makes the back all black because you're obviously burning things. So then I tried this crazy tool right here, which is a mini hot iron, and as you can see there on the board, there's an X-Acto blade, and you can put that X-Acto blade into this iron. It becomes a hot knife, <laughs> which is awesome because it can cut out these interior parts very well and then it also kind of like seals them in a way because it's so hot. So that's been fun. So I've been experimenting with that. So I'm going to go rinse out these two and when they're rinsed I'll come back and show you what they look like and then what I mean by like having to iron them out and stuff. Okay, so I have it all rinsed out and in fact I rinse, I put it into, I rinsed it first and then I put it into soak and then I rinsed it and then I put it in the soak and then I rinsed it and I did that three times. You can see where the black dye is. This is what my sink also looks like because the um, silk organza in here bleeds like a mofo. So when that's all done, you can see in the past I've 
don't know how clear that is to you, but here, this is all stained from it. But um, this is how they come out. So definitely wrinkly, um, and this is kind of a mess here. Like these threads are all wacky. So that's what I'm going to sit here and do is fix this and iron it at the same time to get a bunch of the water out, and then I will just let it set in that position. <laughs> this is not exactly what Christine told me to do. She's like, just iron the crap out of it. Um, I, I do it a little bit differently than she's doing it, and that's sort of ignorance on my part. <laughs> um, belligerence on my part. Because why wouldn't I do what Christine told me to do? She knows what she's doing. But no, for some reason, <laughs> I've decided that blocking these is working well, so I'm just going to sort of run with that, but um, she just irons the crap out of them and that's how that works out. I'm going to put my stool here because I like to sit while I do this and I'll give you a little time lapse of how this goes down. Alright, so now I just sort of like hit that with the iron every 10 minutes or so until it like starts drying out and then I'm going to leave that one overnight. Then the next step is I'm going to take that tiny little iron I showed you right there and I'm going to like fix as many of the strings as I can. And by strings I mean of course thread. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to fill in little gaps wherever I see them, like if I... I think there's one like right here. Do do do. See the little gap? Yeah. I'll fill those in just like kind of sporadically over the next few days as I am bored in between things. I'll just spend like half an hour here, half an hour there. Uh, or if I'm like watching a video or whatever. Just filling in little gaps and stuff. These were printed super beautifully, by the way. <laughs> like, this is nothing to do with, like, Christine printing these out in any way. This is, like, me not being able to get them to lie back down correctly after washing because I'm not good at this yet. So, this is the thing that happens with embroidery. Like, sometimes the threads won't lay down exactly perfectly. So, I'm going to spend some time fixing my little tiny errors, even though I don't think anyone's going to see that once it's on the skirt. But, yeah. So, I will let you know what I'm going to cut. I will let you know when I'm going to cut these out because that's the scary part. <laughs> Hi! I am currently a girl in a Zelda t-shirt and a corset, <laughs> which is not the normal undershirt for this, but today I'm going to measure my skirt and overskirt for closures so that I can go ahead and attach those and get those marked off the list. I also have the ones I need to do for the Hogwarts Express dress, so I think I'm going to measure those also if I need to, and then go ahead and mark them and put closures on everything so that things can get closed. <laughs> so that is my magic that's happening today. Okay, everything is done and measured. Uh, the reason that there's no film footage of that is because the center back closure is in the center back of my Meredith skirts which means I can't measure it myself. Like, I can't figure out, I pin it to show me where the thing is. I can't do that myself. So I had to ask for my husband's help. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of swearing. Anyway, I got in it, and I realized I was, I didn't have the top on, I just had the bottom half, but I realized, like, I was so big that I could not film myself in that mirror to show you how big I am. <laughs> like, my butt is huge. Which I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's great. I am wearing my bum pad and then my lobster cage, two petticoats, a skirt, and an overskirt in that. So like, <sighs> oh, also I have my sleepy pants on, so none of that was good. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was a hot mess, and now I'm here dealing with another hot mess, which I will share with you. Okay, so I looked in my hook and eye drawer thing that I have. Um, 
and I realized, okay, this is a problem because I only have one of, I like these ones a lot and I only have one. These are just like really long bar closures. They, it grabs onto the hook there. It's great. I really, really like these, but I don't have any of the other ends and I'm like, where did they go? Like the package like lives in here. There's nothing in this drawer floating around. So I'm like, well, I mean, there's a lot of things floating around in that drawer, but <laughs> the things that go in here are not the ones. And I'm like, Ugh. okay. So I'm left with a bunch of these. So I think I'm going to probably use um, a couple of these per to get that. And these have a nice positive grip to them, but they're a little harder for, to work with, especially when I'm trying to dress myself. So fun times. I also look through, I have um, antique ones, vintage ones. I don't know. I get these all the time. I look for lots on eBay. Um... You can look at hooks and eyes and bars, and the reason I get them is because they have these bars. Can you hear Keanu? I get these bars, and they're significantly like better than the eye. So you get you can use a hook and an eye, or a hook and a bar. And the bar is just I don't know why it's much better. <laughs> um, but in most cases, most people chose to go with a hook and the eye and not use the bar. So in a lot of these packages, the bars are left over. Which means if you have modern hooks, you can totally use up all these bars and stuff. So I have a few lots of these sitting around. So, and I also at some point bought this, which is ridiculous because it's like a, a, a hundred count of hooks and eyes or hooks and bars. So I have this also. Anyway, <laughs> I have a wealth of hooks and eyes and not, I only have one of the one that I actually want and none of the other one that I would actually like. This one, these ones are great because these are the hook part and they allow you to have several sizes. Like you can ha have it grab here, here, or here. So like if you, if you're having an extreme taco day, let's just say, you can kind of let that out a little bit, which I really enjoy these ones, but I don't have the, the graspy part for that, which is highly annoying. I tried using one of these and it like doesn't really work, so sigh uh but i do want to get this done today so these ones are going to get used woo okay i was totally wrong i actually found the hooks they were sitting in with the other pile of hooks so i was like oh these are they that's great so i can use all three of these which is fantastic i love these so the um overskirt for merida will have two of these on it and hopefully that will be enough to hold that heavy wool thing on me i wish it luck luckily the bustle cage like sort of eh, supports it in enough of it that it probably won't tear off but eh, yeah I'm gonna put two anyway uh, so I also had a little clean out and reordered this drawer got rid of some things that I didn't need slash want and uh, now I feel better about this drawer all right I feel guilty because I crossed this off before I came and got the camera so I'm sorry I apologize to you all deeply and this is done also all right these are not the neatest stitches in and uh, this should all make you guys feel real good about whatever it is you do to your hooks and eyes we cannot all put in the perfect stitches all the time <laughs> This was a hot mess. I actually accidentally put these guys on this side and these guys on this. I don't know. There was something. I had to rip all these off and put them back on. I was devastated. <laughs> anyway, so that's done now. So that can be marked off, which it was. I think I'm going to work on the Harry Potter ones later because it's actually like four o'clock in the morning and I kind of want to go to sleep. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and follow the instincts. Um, this is also done and I use one of these kind of hooks for that. I guess I got to decide if I want to use these or these tomorrow for these guys. So I'm going to think about that for a little bit. This doesn't really have anything to do with Merida, but <laughs> I did the closer on the black skirt and then I just came and did the Hogwarts overskirt as well. So I got closers done. So that's cool. I'm going to do a little satisfying thing for me which is this and then I realized because we've already done the wig obviously that this could go that makes me happy hi a little update for you guys I have four of the bears done where I have filled in all the little gaps and I have three more to go I decided to take a little break and 
go ahead and put the ties into the skirt and the overskirt. I have done the skirt and not the overskirt. Someone asked about these. So these go in the back. So as you can see, this is the pleated part. So this is the back of the inside of the skirt. And I just use like random ribbon. People like to give me ribbons around Christmas presents and stuff. <laughs> so these don't even match, <laughs> although these do do. So um, I just use these for ties on the insides of things. So basically what these do is they help keep like all of this pleated stuff squished up and to the back of the skirt because these will then rest when they're tied together um, kind of on the back of your bustle cage and with petticoats over it. It's sort of hard to explain. I will show you when I tie them up. Um, but it keeps this whole section like bunched up and like on the back of your body instead of the natural tendency which is for these pleats to remain pleated up here but for this bulk to sort of like spread out and come down the side of the bustle cage and then like be on the sides more. That's not really what you're looking for. You're looking for some more poof in the back. So I'm going to do, I've done this to this one. I'm going to go ahead and do this to this one now. Okay, so these tapes are in and they actually get attached to the bottom of where the pleats are in here. And the pleats are effectively separate, like the front and back of this overskirt are entirely separate pieces and they're only really connected here by this uh, waistband. So it's really to keep the front of the skirt and the pleats laying flat against you by basically tying them behind you where they meet. So um, I don't know how actually necessary these are because the weight of the wool really holds these down anyway, but I feel like it's probably a safe to just put them in. So they're in and ready to go. And we have more things that we can cross off the list. Okay, so this overskirt situation is completely check them in day here. Uh, this guy's good, and I'm just gonna move this to being just trim. Cool. So, what can this get written up as? Uh, fill in leaders. Cut out. There's. So on. Bears. All right, cool. I will also move this like wig one, which is just to attach the wig clips up because I like a tidy board. Okay, so this is what we've got left. I'm not sure if this is gonna happen. People keep asking me what the magic is. The magic is like, do I want to do? some sort of trim around the neckline and cuffs. I don't know if I need to do that or not. So I need to get everything else done and figured out. And it may be that like, I don't do that right now, but I add it later, question mark. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, I have all of these guys done and now I need to cut them out. And I wanna procrastinate that. <laughs> uh, at least I admit it. So I made a little sampler here. God, this is hard to see. Come with me, come here. Come here, Pladness. Yeah, oh, there you go. Okay, so we have button samplers. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, so here, let me give you the pros and cons and tell you what happened and why I chose what I did. Okay, so here's a black satin button. And the pro of this guy is that it is already made. And I have all of these already made because I bought them in the fabric district already made one time. This green one is the skirt fabric, and it's a cover covered, like, snap-together button mold, which I very much enjoy. And this woolly one right here is a, a button mold that is from Brilliant Trowbridge, and I have covered it and parked it onto this. I took a survey of, like, let's say 15 to 20 people, and they're pretty much tied. Like, there are people who are in all of these camps that say the black one is the best, the green one is the best, or the woolly one is the best. Uh, a lot of people with the woolly one are like, are you going to match it to its exact location? And I am like, no. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> anyway, I am going to go with these. Because this one is no work, and this one is actually a lot of work to make, and so I'm going to pick middle ground work, and also it matches the skirt which I like and it looks good like on all the locations of of this so I'm just I'm just gonna do this 
and I like this one best, so I'm doing what I want. I'm gonna go figure out how many of these I need for my bodice and then make them. Okay, I've shown this before, but I thought I would show it again. Um, I'm using these little button molds. These ones are half an inch, so they're pretty small. Uh, this is sort of what they look like when they come. They will frequently come the first time you get one, or maybe more. You get them with these two pieces, and you definitely want this, because this is the thing that lets you put them together. And then the pattern you need to cut out is always on the back of every one of these packages, including all the refills from then on. So I just have literally a ton of these <laughs> from doing this a million times. Anyway, these are super simple. I just cut out little pieces. And then I place this here, and I cut out slightly larger, maybe 16th, 8th of an inch bigger. I'm not exact about it, but I do like, you know, just a little bit bigger. If you do it exactly, it's fine. It's just there's like very little squidge room if you do that, and you want just the smallest amount of squidge room, especially with silk because it tends to fray. And I cut these out like as I go rather than cutting out all the circles because they will start to fray and that will eat up your squidge room and then it won't work out right. Okay, so I take this thing and I actually like make a dent so I can see where it is and it's it's right now it's slightly off center so I sort of like move things around until it gets pretty on center and then I drop this guy in there. Take this little thing and you just push this down in here. And here's my secret trick. Someone made that me this awesome 3D printed glue holder, which I really appreciate. So thank you to the person who did that, who might be watching this. I drop a little fabric jack in there. You can do this before you push the fabric down in just a second or after. It's kind of a lot to do it both. If you do it after, it kind of connects the back to the front more. So sometimes that's a better idea. I'm just trying to get some glue in there. It will definitely like seep through the cracks in here so it will attach it. There are times when these guys can fail and they'll come apart so this will stay like this attached to your jacket and your button will come off. And I had that happen in my Cheshire Cat. Yeah, the glue did come out a little bit. So then I take this and I stuff the, the back into it and then I just push it around, push it down and around. You'll feel it like pop into the situation. And you can have a look at it and it's pretty good in there. Although there's one edge that's like less down than I would like it to be. So I might push on it a little bit and squidge it around. And that looks a little bit better, a little bit more even. And then you just sort of pop this guy out and I have a fabric cover button. I have six of these made. I keep an extra rag around for wiping off the fabric tack, which really should be upside down at this point. So I'm, I need to make 14 of them. So I'm just gonna crank on and make 14 of these. Okay, I have manifested 14 buttons. And I've also made myself a little sampler here of my possible buttons. And this is actually pretty dumb because I should have made one that had every single kind of buttonhole that I have and made a sampler for myself so I can see what they actually look like. <laughs> I will probably do that when this project is over. And I did it in a contrasting color so I could see what they would look like. So this is a normal buttonhole, this is a keyhole button, this is a keyhole with like a pointy end. Uh, this one here is supposed to be like artisanal, like this is what a hand-bound buttonhole would be. I have no idea what's happening here. Uh, this one is supposed to be like rounded on both ends and I actually like this one I think the best so this might be the one I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this buttonhole open with perhaps some of my new buttonhole cut cutters and uh, see what that feels like with the buttons like try to push a button through it and see if it feels good and stuff and if that all works out then I'm gonna mark it and change the thread <laughs> to um, probably the green and then go ahead and make my buttonholes. This sewing machine makes bitchin' buttonholes so easy, too, so I feel real solid about this. So, that's, that's great. Yay. Okay, we have 14 beautiful buttonholes that I'm pretty happy with, that look really good. Uh, I probably could have used the blue thread. I have some dark navy blue, but that's okay. I like the green. I'm into it. So, I'm gonna go slice these open. I have a million new buttonholers. I'm probably going to make a video on buttonholers and 
try them all out. My estimation is they all work exactly the same. So I'm gonna hack these open now. Okay, these are all open now, which I'm very excited about, and uh, the buttons fit through, so hype. I did uh, munch one of them and had to like sew it back up, <laughs> so that's a thing. Happens to the best of us, guys. Don't stress about it. Anyway, uh, this is uh, pretty good, and I'm going to sew the buttons on the other side in the way that I normally do, which is one at a time. Maybe two. We'll see. I'm going to do the first one first. I think I might do that tomorrow, though, because I'm getting a little pooped, and it's four o'clock in the morning, so yeah, I'll hit that up next time. Mid button check-in. I'm digging these. I'm thinking they're looking good. Going on nicely. Uh, I have six on and I have 14 to do, so I'm gonna keep cranking, but I thought I would check in. I do like how these lines are lining up. I'm feeling really smug right now. Witness my smugness. I'm scared that I just said that out loud, because I think I just jinxed everything, but we'll see. Okay, we have all the buttons in. That's exciting. Let's go look at the board. Okay, where are we at? We filled in the bears, so that's good. So I need to do that. I got buttons and buttonholes. Okay, these three things, we're going to talk about levels of done. So I think that there are levels of done. I think that there are good enough to call this project done, done. I think there's good enough to take photos in this dress done, done. I think there's a, I could wear it to the for, out for the first time, done. And I think there are always improvements that can be made. These last three things on this bodice are, fall into that, that last category there. I can take photos of this dress and even wear it out without sewing the armholes, without hemming the tails, or without doing any magic. Which, I still haven't decided if I'm going to do magic, so that's pretty much going to come off the board. Because, like, I'm still thinking about that, I want to test some things, it's probably something that I'm going to think about for a while, so it is not required for me to call this project done in any way. So, I'm going to take this one off. And these are left, but these are probably actually going to get moved over there, and the bodice is going to come off, and I'm going to call this wearable for a photo shoot. And that moves me much closer to being actually done. <laughs> Which is very exciting to me, because I am kind of done. <laughs> I need a break from this costume. I just want it done. So yeah. So I'm going to slap on some wig clips and I need to cut out the bears and there's seven of them and it's going to take me a long time to do that. Probably a couple days and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Um, probably tomorrow. I'm going to have to sew on the bears. That's also going to be a giant pain in the butt. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I think that's going to take me the better part of this week. Either way, it's almost four o'clock in the morning and now is not the time to play with a scalding hot razor blade. So I'm going to put that off until tomorrow, the cutting out of the bears, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm a horrible YouTuber. I, I put the wig clips in. I want to show you them, but I'm not going to because that is now all wrapped up and that was actually kind of a pain in the butt to get in there. <laughs> and I forgot to do the needful and show it to you guys. Wig clips look like this and you sew them into your wig so that the so because they like pop open and shut I'll just show you so they look like this and they pop open like this so they have this comb and you make this uh, attack like uh, up against the wig part this back rubbery part goes up against the wig and this little comb thing can slide into your hair as the wig goes on your head kind of slides under the wig cap and into whatever hair you have sometimes people make little tiny buns in the front of their head to catch these and then while it's on the attached to the wig you just pop that shut and it helps hold your wig to the front of your head a lot better okay let's go take this off and then we're gonna call today good again i'm gonna go to bed for reals for reals yo wig wig clips that's what happened. Something's happening that hasn't happened in a long time. <laughs> I am talking to you while it's light out. All right. The board has gotten significantly more simple. I have moved the lot of stuff to that edge right there. And this is all I need to do right now before we can call this done. All right, let's do some scary things. Okay, so as you know, got these bears and I've got all this black stuff here and then also in the middle which I want to remove 
I have been experimenting with different methods. I have, of course, tried the obvious choice. It's not close enough for me. Like, it's fine. I could probably deal with it. It would be okay. I've also tried this method, uh, which does work really well. This was Morgan's suggestion. It's just like, burn it off. And I'm like, hey, great. The problem is this entire back gets black when I do that. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> See if there's something better. I mean, that's a good second option. And I might still do it for parts of it. And then I discovered this. All right, so I got given this iron, which doesn't look like much, but if you leave it on for like 20 minutes, it turns uh, hotter than the sun, as it turns out. It has all these little attachments to have different shaped irons, which is super useful. This one I think is for flower making. You can put it on silk petals and like do this with the hot iron and it makes it like the petals curl. This is the thing that caught my attention. <laughs> so yes, this is essentially an X-Acto blade. And I can use this on this and it essentially makes a hot knife. So I'm going to experiment right now. I think I can cut out the bulk of it with the X-Acto knife by itself. And then you can use the hot knife, like heat the exact, you put that in here and it sticks out the end, and you can use the heat, the hot knife, on the X-Acto knife to essentially melt the edges of what you're doing. So I'm going to try both methods, and the reason I'm going to do that is because when you're using an X-Acto knife, your inclination is to like, get down, right? And like, <laughs> get a good firm grip on this so it's like, easily controlled. Now when this is sticking out of here, it's probably like this long. You would want to inherently choke down on this to like get as close as you can but first of all this gate is here and it's really hard to get a grip on this gate and second of all this gate is here and it's not on the bottom I know because I have a burn on my hand uh, to protect you from this giant hot rod so basically you have to hold it back here and this is really hard to control <laughs> So I am going to try to cut it out with an X-Acto blade first and then like essentially use the hot knife part of it to like cauterize it essentially. But if that doesn't work, then I will cut it with this. I have cut one entire one out. Like I, Christine sent me a bunch of samples and I managed to do it and I didn't mess it up. So I can do it that way. I just think it would be faster if I could like just cut it first and then X-Acto blade like the very edge off. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to do a little bit more experimenting, stuff like that. Before I do any of that though, I'm, what I'm going to do is set up my mannequin with the skirt on it and I'm going to just pin these on nose to nose, even with the black stuff on, so that I can make sure that in fact I do need seven to go all the way around because I don't want to cut seven if I don't have to cut seven. <laughs> so I'm going to do seven so that they, you know, are evenly spaced and see how they go and th that they sit nicely on the skirt and as long as that works out then I'm gonna start cranking on it. Okay, so what I just learned is that they do fit exactly, and in a bunch of cases I have actually put them too far apart from each other. They should be closer to nose to nose on a lot of occasions than they are, uh, but they will fit pretty much exactly around the edge. So I am going to go ahead and do all the cutting now. Fun, fun times. What I just learned is it's actually like way easier to cut with the knife super hot. So that's what's going to happen. Okay, here is one completely cut out. I'm going to zoom in here to show you. It's pretty tight. 
the great thing is like even if you don't get it exactly perfect you can just kind of hold the blade against the side and it sort of melts it <laughs> like it cleans up the edge a lot so like there's still a little bit of stringy stuff maybe in here ish areas like you can see but no one will see that from a distance because it will look like this which is fantastic all right i am going to have to cut seven of these out i might like show you some of it now so i wanted to get one done but and this took just takes like an hour <laughs> so if you get a really long oh keanu says hello if you get a very long uh time lapse right now that's what that's about Alright, we have number two cut out, so I'm gonna maybe do another one.
just a minute. Probably one or two more tonight and then call it and do some other stuff for a while and then I will do the last ones. Okay, we have seven cutout bears. I'm gonna go pin them on the skirt to see what they look like on there and get the placement good so that I can feel good about spraying some glue on the back of them and then stitching them on. Okay, so I have them lined up. Everything looks good. I'm excited about it and I'm gonna start gluing and stitching. Okay, here is how this is going to go down. I am going to take them off one by one, iron the area that they're about to go on, then I'm going to put some freezer paper in the bottom of that box, lay the thing down, spray it with spray glue, pick it back up, and place it down. I actually kind of want to scarily respace them a little bit as I go because they're kind of far apart in the back and kind of close together in the front, so I'm just going to just ooch them like an eighth of an inch so that's also going to go on while this goes down i'm starting to go back and moving to the center front because i want to take at least one off in the center back probably the two center back ones and move them off and do the whole process first just to make sure it works then i'll go do the center front one because that's the most important one and then move back between them because there'll only be two between them so uh once they're glued down then i will go around the edges and stitch them down and this will take me forever which is fantastic Okay, this one is on and it went really well, so I'm going to do a second one. First, I'm going to iron. You guys all know what ironing looks like. Looks the same in every country, in every language. Actually, it kind of doesn't. <laughs> Some places iron differently. Give it a solid spray. Okay, so these two are down. So I'm going to leave them and then let them sit for a little bit and then I'm going to go move the skirt and try to do other ones. I'm going to leave them just in case there's any because I can feel a little bit of stickiness on the front of these. And I don't want it to like stick to the wool mat. I want this all to just dry. So I'm going to let leave it alone for a little bit. Here's where I'm going to do something that I think you guys are going to hate. I'm going to end this vlog. <laughs> I know we're so close to being done. But I think me stitching these on is going to take me several days of me stitching, uh, you know, a few hours at a time here and there because I do have other things that I'm doing. So this vlog is also already two hours of the footage without anything that I just filmed. So it's getting kind of really long anyway. Also, it's a heck and hot out. It's like 85 degrees out today. So <laughs> there's no way I'm putting on a wool dress and going outside to shoot pictures. There is absolutely no way that I'm putting on a wool dress and a wig to go outside and shoot pictures. Um, but it is supposed to be very cool, possibly even raining, maybe this weekend, maybe um, Monday is supposed to be really nice, we'll see. So I'm thinking I can probably do it then, but I don't want to wait and then have to edit the vlog after that and add a whole bunch more footage. I kind of wanted to do a get ready with me, so trust me guys, I want to see me in this too, like I really do. But I think I need to leave this vlog and edit it and get it out because I haven't put a video out in a couple weeks and I, I, I'm feeling it. Like, I hate it when I don't put vlogs out for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I promise you that there will be a vlog very soon with me wearing the Merida dress. It's going to come. Um, and I'm, I want to put this on ASAP. So as soon as it cools down, I can do that. I'm also considering ordering a photography backdrop setup thing so I might do it there I'm not sure but it'll take me a bunch of time to sew these on and I would rather just get this video out to you so anyway if you like this video do give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't if you want to know when I release videos push the little bell thing so that it'll send you a little notification on your phone to let you know that 
Otherwise, let me know what you guys are up to, what are you listening to, what are you watching, all that kind of stuff. I just finished uh, Artemis, uh, which I was reading for the podcast. I loved it. Spoilers for whenever that is, like months from now <laughs> when you guys get that podcast. Um, Morgan is moving, so we are like ramming through books and recording podcasts early so she has a bit of time on the other end because they come out every other week. This is probably like a month and a half out from now that you'll hear this one, but uh, yeah, so we're ramming through books right now. Um, I'm also listening to a new podcast called You're Dead to Me, which is put on by the BBC Radio 4, I think, and they um, do like 45 minutes to an hour on any like random historical figure topic, whatever, but they have a historian and a comedian and that's very funny. So I've learned a lot of stuff in the last few days. So anyway, it's a really good podcast. I'm enjoying that. What are we watching? We're watching The Nevers, which so far is very good and we like it. It's like X-Men, but 1890s. The costumes are, I think, great. Some of the things about it are questionable, <laughs> but most of it's pretty good. Like, I I'm like, I would wear that. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know if you guys are watching those and what you think of them. The controversy around the Nevers is that it is created and the first three episodes are directed by Joss. The first six, I think, are written with Joss. Um, and Jane Espenson, who has been his, like, writing partner, basically, since Buffy. Joss um, is problematic. Let's just say that. I do not approve of his actions. At all. Like, that's garbage. Absolute garbage. I do like his writing style. So, and I don't know, like, they're handing it over to a completely different writer-director, I guess. They're doing six, six, the first season is 12 episodes, it's in two parts. The first six are like Jossy, and the second season, are, or the second part of the season, which is the second six episodes, is like by this other person. And I'm like, you cannot take the, the Joss out of this storyline, like it's super Jossy. <laughs> so I'm like, how is that gonna go, and is it gonna be as good, like... Hmm. Everyone is problematic. Everyone is problematic. <laughs> like, like I, I'm scared to like people now <laughs> because everyone I'm like, oh, like I just found out stuff about Gary Oldman that I'm like, really? You? Okay, cool. <sighs> and with that positive note, bye guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't leave you on that. Um, yeah. Uh, I do like The Nevers. I think it's a really good show. Uh, we were watching something else. I think we're gonna maybe, we're watching Farscape again, like I think I told you a while ago. We got off of it, now we're back on it. I'm also thinking about watching Battlestar Galactica again. Not the original, the new series, but not the new series because it's now like 10 years old. <laughs> uh, so, Katie Sackhoff <laughs> version. Um, uh, we're thinking about watching that again, so that might be a thing soon. Yeah, and I'm gearing up for a couple of little trips that I'm about to take. Uh, I don't know if I've actually announced that on the channel. I, th I was saying goodbye and now I'm chatting. This is what happens. Yeah, so I'm going to go to LA for a weekend to visit my friend Hannah and we're gonna go to the Fabric District, so I will film that. And also I'm gonna go over to Reno and see uh, Abby and Nicole and Chrissy, which should be really fun for uh, both for a long weekend um, we're gonna go to Millen Fabrics. I'm probably gonna shoot pictures of Merida in the forest in Tahoe. We're go I'm gonna get patterns cut for me because like if you are staying in the house of someone who worked at the Milliner in Colonial Williamsburg, why would you not get pattern pieces cut for you? So I'm getting that cut. I'm like, it is like going to sewing camp that weekend, you guys. Like I am hype. <laughs> Basically everyone there is fully vaccinated. Everyone at Hannah's house is fully vaccinated. So, um, and I will be so, um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go hide in other people's houses and eat their takeout, <laughs> is essentially what's gonna happen. But I'm excited about potentially going to a restaurant and eating outside. <laughs> like, that would be a cool new thing to do. I don't know if we're gonna do it, but, you know, we might. And it sounds like fun, maybe, so we'll see. Um, I also <sighs> have a ticket to Disneyland for June. So that might be happening. I'm still not sure if I want to go or not. I'm fully vaccinated. There's no reason I shouldn't go because like, I'm not gonna get any safer than I am right now, which would mean like, I guess I don't go to Disneyland, but ever again. <laughs> I mean, part of me is like, don't go to Disneyland ever again. 
I have like, I, I realize like, I have a little bit of PTSD <laughs> around like not seeing people, but also I'm just mad at the public for, for not masking and for wearing masks under their noses and for just being like really irresponsible. I, I, I'm mad at the government, I'm mad at the public, I'm mad at like just people. So um, Disneyland is actually a great place to do it if I have to go to a really public place I think because they are so strict about mask rules and they just kick you out of the park if you're not wearing one. They just like there's no there's no warnings it's just like eject so and it's severely limited capacity and it's only some rides that are safe and stuff so I'm thinking we're gonna go hopefully it'll ha happen it should be exciting. I'm nervous, but also excited, so we shall see. Things are happening here, and I'm still weirded out about it. <laughs> but it's exciting news, and it's something to look forward to, and hopefully by the time we get to June, I'll feel better about it, and it will be an okay thing to do. I feel like I'm pretty responsible about things. I duck and weave around people. I'm still gonna obviously have to wear a mask there, and basically anytime I'm out in public, so... And I'm gonna keep doing that. Let me know what you guys are up to. Are you guys, if anyone here is vaccinated, have you been like going out and doing things? Like, what is that like? It's all weird to me. It's so weird. And it shouldn't be, I am the most extroverted extrovert. Like it used to be that I was going somewhere every weekend. Like I would, I traveled all the time and now I'm like super freaked out about it. <laughs> okay, okay. Now with that weird thing, I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time with Merida on. We're gonna do it. I promise you. It's it's like as soon as these are on, we are done. Checked, done, finished. So that's very exciting. I'm gonna just cross off the sew on the bear so you all can have the gratification of the fact that you saw it happen. And then next time I'm gonna come change the bustle count to 398. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do this for you guys, and then literally I'm just gonna write it back down for me. There you go. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Here's a little PS. I have two of them sewn on. Take about, about an hour per one to sew on. So, seven hours. Fun times.